What's up, guys? You are listening to The Lifestyle Hub, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes and into the lives of inspiring individuals to not only educate you, but unlock your true potential to live a healthy, happy, and more fulfilling life. I'm your host, Jason Grimmer. Thanks for tuning in. Now let's get the show on the road. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, the leading home and commercial gym specialist in the Middle East, Ghana Fitness Supplies. You can check them out at www.ghana.ae for all your fitness needs. All right, guys, I'm very, very excited today to introduce today's guest, often described as Super Sam because of many achievements, skill sets such as being a skydiving instructor, scuba dive instructor, race bike instructor, a multi-award winning pharmacist, and obviously most relevant to to today's topic, canine training specialist. Sam is the CEO at Dog Venture, and he's here today sitting opposite me. Welcome. Thank you so much. Jason. How are you, man? Good, bro. Good. Thanks so much for coming in. This Thank is really so cool. Thank you so much for the invitation, man. It's, it's honestly a pleasure to have you in. Guys, if you've been following me for a while, obviously um, you may have heard of Sam. If not, today we're going to really dive into everything that Sam is about, everything that Sam does when it comes to obviously canine training. Um, hopefully it's an episode that you can kind of sit there and w- listen and learn and walk away going, you know, you now can be a, a better dog owner or you may be able to feel more confident to take that step towards actually looking to own a puppy or a dog of your own. Um, Sam, when I have guests first come onto the podcast, I like to ask them and I'd like you to answer in your words, what do you do for a living? So right now I'm full time uh, working as a CEO at Dog Venture HQ. And I have my own business as well uh, for uh, bikes, sport bike, and the racing team is called Rough Moto as well. That's what I'm doing right now as a full-time job. Yes. Uh, my background is totally different. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. I um, uh, had my diploma as well as a clinical pharmacist. Yeah. Then I changed my career a little bit to be a vet. So I had my diploma as well as a vet. And then I start from that point all the communication and connection with pets industry. The pet industry. And how long ago was this? Did this all start for you? So I st- I graduated uh, 2006 as a pharmacist. Yeah. And then since that time till 2012, I've been working full time as a, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. So I was being a business lead head for a pharmaceutical company in the Middle East. Wow. And during that time, I've been doing, uh, I would say it's like a silent business aside, like I need to find my passion which is definitely and obviously was all about pets. Yes. And then I decide, okay, you know what? Let's take the right steps. So I start my career as a dog trainer. Starting from 2012, I graduate from one academy in USA as a professional dog trainer. And then I travel to UK for six months as a behavior. Uh, because some people, they confuse about the dog trainer and behaviorist. Okay. Okay. So What's the difference? So... It's a little bit tiny difference. So the dog trainer can do behavior modifications, which totally fine, but you cannot call him behaviorist. Behaviors, it should be study a vet. You need to be a vet to okay. be understand everything because it's not only about the behavior issue, it might be medical issue as well in the yes. dog. So you need to be a vet to call yourself a behaviorist. Okay. However, again, as a dog trainer, you can do a behavior modification for the pets and for the dogs. Okay, so you can, there's ways to bridge between both. Yes, exactly. I mean, that makes sense because a lot of the time, one of the most important ways for dogs to communicate or or ways that you would, I guess, understand them is from medical, right? Like how they're responding to food or how they're feeling. Because they obviously obviously can't speak, unfortunately. (laughs) 100% here, right? Yeah, Yeah, you are right. That makes a lot of sense. So I think just, I want to pause there and highlight that. So what's quite inspiring by what you've just said is you were quite deep in a different field obviously being the pharmacy side but then you had like a calling to like chase what you were passionate about yes um how do you feel having made that decision now so it's i will say it's it's really tough decision because you came from a level of uh you know even if you were talking about your life as an earning Mm, okay from that such level to start your own business your own career yeah uh it's quite challenging, but definitely it's your passion. So you are happy about what you are doing. You wake up every day. You just want to do that. Like I'm, yes. I'm happy to do that. Whatever it takes from me right now, I can see that we are very successful. I'm very successful in that career. Mm. And I'm very happy. I'm very proud about that 
trans transition or? transition yeah, yeah happening right. in my career yeah. it, you would say that it wasn't easy right even it though you were, not easy. even it was a passion no you would was, have worked i know you've worked easy. hard from what i've seen but it, it tell was us not about easy that. and i can see most i can tell you most of my friends like they are like we are colleagues we are working in the same field and yes. they keep calling me like you're crazy like what are, what are you doing you are spending most of your money traveling, study, do that. Forget about it. What do you want? Mm. You are earning very well here. What you are thinking even to change your career right now. Yeah. So, and it's like, for them, it's like dramatic change. Like it's n not related to our field. Yes. Right. So I start 2012 first to finish my diploma as a vet. So I did all, it was online course in mm. Egypt uh, because I um, have a medical background. So it was easy for me. Yeah. I do online uh, attend. Then I have to travel every year to Egypt to do the exam and yes. attend with them till I graduate. And I was very happy. Of, but for them, it's like, man, that's crazy. Like, mm. you don't need to do that. I mean, a lot of people would think that. Like, I think there's a lot of people out there right now who are in jobs that potentially are earning quite good money, like you mentioned they're probably waking up each day thinking about where they'd rather be, but a lot of people... They don't know. Yes. I have that, I, you know exactly. what? The first question I ask my friend, what's your passion? Like, imagine tomorrow you wake up and, because it's not your company, you mm. are working there. Tomorrow they decide to close the company in the Middle East or whatever, and you need to do something you really love. Yes. You, you're really passionate about it. What will come to your mind? <laughs> and unfortunately, most of them, they don't have any clue. Like, yeah. to be honest with you, I don't know. Yes. And that's really sad. It is. It, it is. And it's great that you found that passion in the dog training side. And it's obviously amazing that you've taken that step. And again, we're going to highlight obviously how credible Sam is when it comes to anything related to obviously animals, but in particular canines um, in today's episode. So I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit more into what would you say is the main art of being like a dog specialist or a canine specialist? Okay. So for when we come to dogs, uh, you know, they are a companion. Yeah. So you need to understand them. You need to know what they need from you. Because I will tell you, uh, not about the first time dog owner, but everyone, you will go, you see a dog, you mm. you feel like you have a connection with him. You take your dog with you back home, especially dogs coming from shelters. Mm. And what do you expect? It's my dog. He's going to listen to me. And it's totally wrong. It's still, he doesn't know you. He doesn't have any connection with you. So here you need a professional. You need someone to, you know, open your eyes and make you to understand what the dog expects from you. Because the dog also, he has expectation from you. Yeah. And also you have expectation from the dog. So how you can, you know, to, to reach to that point, which is you uh, understand the dog and dog can understand you very well. Yes. Here when the dog trainer are come in and when he can explain that to the to you. So for me, the way of the communication with the dog, it's really very important yes. because even different breeds, they do have different approach. Okay. Yeah. This is, I was going to touch on this, like breeds related to different people. So, okay. That's interesting. So with this companionship and this expectation that you've mentioned, are there many other animals? I mean, you know, you know, the mm -hmm. animal kingdom quite well. Are there other, many other animals that can mm -hmm. offer the same kind of connection that a canine can? I don't think there no, is no, off the top there, of my head. There, no, there not from a, a level of obedience no. and like pure like love and and you companionship. Can, uh, see, of course, you know the dogs coming back from wolf, mm. right? But still, till now, the dogs the best companions for humans. Yes, you cannot compare that with any other animals. Yes, so many, so many animals. I would say so many, so many. Like you can count as many as you want. You can see them well trained and they are going with humans. But by end of the day, not like dogs. Not like no. Of course, you they're not the find. same loyalty. No, would you say? No, not same loyalty. Not same obedience. Yeah, because I think you see that people make that mistake. And obviously, when it comes to animals out in the wild, this is slightly off topic. But you know, they'll take a bear cub. Yeah. from when it's a baby or a tiger but then later on even no. though it's trained there's still always that instinct or they, right. they don't have the same loyalty right no they don't yeah and you can see how many accidents happen that's circus right. with of lions course. and tigers with own instructors right yes when people think they've got the control exactly. but it's not quite so like you said before i think that was great it's like two-sided yeah you need to obviously understand that they have expectations as well um Obviously, we we're going to touch on a little bit later, like, I mean, obviously how we met, but I wanted to kind of just carry on on that topic about breeds and the right person. So yeah. I think what would you say is 
the key when somebody's looking if, if to know if they're the right person to own a dog? Like, is there a key when it's like, you know, how do you know if you're the right person to to look at owning a dog? Because okay. I, I think there's some definitely some standard expectations that should be accounted for. Only right? one question you need to ask the person who needs to own a dog. Okay. What tell me about your lifestyle? Yeah. From your lifestyle, I can tell you if you can mm. own a dog or you cannot. Okay. Because your lifestyle, it defines everything. Yes. Define the dog needs. Yes. Is, is that the life the dog needs with you or not? Yes. Right? So if you are just a person who working 10 hours a day mm. and you just, you come back from your home, I'm sure you cannot do anything for yourself. So I expect that your dog will not do anything as well. Yeah. So you cannot bring a dog just sitting at home, waiting for you 10 hours, sitting alone there. And when you come back from your home, you are tired. And if you see your dog, he did any mess, you will start shouting, screaming at him. Mm. And that's not fair for the dogs. That's right. So tell me about your lifestyle. I can tell you if you can uh, have a dog or not. Yeah, and this is so true because when I first met you, we were down yeah. at the Mac Hills and I'd come up to you. You guys had huskies. So obviously I was drawn in. Sam's got two amazing huskies at the time, Cooper yeah. and Cootie. Cootie yeah. um, Cooper's like a brownie color, similar to Luna for those that know, and Cootie's like black and white mix. They're absolutely amazing. When I'd first met Sam, he had both the Huskies. You're down at Dog yeah. and I went over and I was like, hey, you're like, I'd like to know like about getting Huskies, which I'm sure you get asked all the time. And now having been a Husky owner, people do come up to you, especially with Huskies, because mm -hmm. they're quite amazing looking dogs. Yeah. And they'll ask, could I, like, what's it like having a Husky? People are intrigued. The first thing you asked me was that question. Yeah. You're like, what's your lifestyle? Like, I, I felt like you were quite, I'm not going to say rude, but you were very like direct. You were like, you, you didn't know me at the time. And you were just like, what's, you were very friendly, of, of course. But what I'm trying to say is you were very like, what's your lifestyle like? Because like, it's black and white. Yeah, it, yeah. You need everything to be good for you. Okay, yeah. please provide a good lifestyle for your face as That's well. That's right. Yeah. So if you're just sitting down, laying back, doing nothing and you are getting husky, mm. please go to the shelters right today. Like just yeah. just go check shelters and see how many dogs, how many huskies and people just abandon them because they thought, as you said, he's uh, have uh, blue eyes, mm. fluffy. He's a very cute. He's a puppy. Yeah. Like maybe two kg still a puppy. That's right. But after six months, he will not be that. And he need, he has a lot of energy to That's like, right. yeah, to consume. So what yeah. are you going to do? That's right. He cannot sit alone at home. He will dig your sofa. He will eat your bed. He will chew everything in mm. the house. But if you are taking them out, they exercise very well. They enjoy their days. You are enjoying with them. Go back home. The most beautiful That's creature right. in earth. Exactly. And I think when we'd spoken, I'd kind of was trying to, you know, find the right pathway to look at, you know, having some company when it came to like, obviously having a canine. Mm. I had two Border Collies back home in Australia. They were amazing, very active. Yeah, of course. So from an active breed of dog, my lifestyle is quite active. So long story short, obviously I ended up with Loki and I think you were the first person to actually meet him yeah, outside of like the family circle. It was like, I think you were the first yeah. person. Um, wh what did you think of him when you came in? Loki? Yeah. When Loki. you remember that day, do you remember yeah. when you first came? Yeah. I was worried uh, about him because it was for you guys, it was a little bit challenging, yeah. for especially Loki with as a husky puppy, because if you have uh, back home in a border coolie and they are adult already. Yes. So it's totally different uh, journey, I will say, mm. about when you have a puppy. Puppy is totally different. It's, it's a huge responsibility. Yes. The dog need to go out every two hours. You need to feed him. You need to be, keep your eyes on him. You need to first to isolate him. You know, we need to build his immunity. We need the dog to be well trained. He need to listen. He need to be socialized. There's so many works when it comes to a puppy. Yes. But I was, I was like not not sure but i was really quite sure about the best life is gonna be having to loki because you are a very active person you yes. go for running you take him with you you go to the desert he's going always with you mm. so now you can see loki how he's behave how he's doing with other dogs yes like he's, he's an amazing dog right now. yeah he's come a long way and like <laughs> sam was sam is a massive credit to obviously where loki is and obviously luna as well but loki i think required a lot more training mm. and sam's exactly right i did have two dogs but the thing people forget is you have dogs growing up as a kid yeah. I can guarantee think back your dad or your mum probably spent a majority of the time raising those puppies like you know yeah. I grew up around dogs but when that when they were puppies I was maybe seven yeah. to, tw to 10 years old I didn't even remember that puppy phase I, you know they, they lived until they were 12 and they had a, such a great life with us but my when I was with them as an older or younger adult at the time they were already 10 11 mm -hmm. so their energy and their behaviors were so different 
So I think the thing that I definitely learned of having Loki is just like Sam listed, there were so many different things to think about, right? Yeah, of course. Um, and that's why I wanted to kind of lead on to the next point, which is what would you say, is there a specific breed? So say somebody's, they're like, look, I'm ready for a dog. Mm -hmm. They've answered that <laughs> question, which is, I do have time to incorporate a dog into my life. Is there a specific breed that can suit a certain person? Is that a thing or can anyone pick whatever they want? Okay, again, if you are telling me, you, as a Jason, you need to get English Bulldog. Yes. Definitely it will not suit you. Okay. Definitely, because you cannot take him five minutes outside and the dog cannot move. Mm. So how are you going to take him out to do exercises? I'm not saying literally five minutes, but the dog you. cannot, his energy cannot suit like a husky or like a German shepherd. They cannot do that, right? Yeah. So usually, uh, again, but if you are talking about a guy who's going out for a walk for five minutes or he chill in the home, yeah, definitely that breed will suit him, okay. right? So some breed, yes, it needs to be, that's why I'm asking you what's your lifestyle so yes. we can help you, we can guide you, we can advise you as well, yes. which breed will suit you more. Yes. Okay. So this is an important thing that I think a lot of people don't think about. Yes. They just look at a picture, they exactly. watch a movie of a dog they like the look of. And I think there's the other side of dogs, right? Which is the the temperament or the behavior yes. side. If you're getting a dog that's quite like, I mean, Loki's quite alpha and strong mm -hmm. and there's dogs a lot stronger and bigger than him. You need to be prepared to yes. work with that. Don't of course. You? Yeah, yeah, 100%. See, the problem here also... I'm talking about Dubai market, yes. about pets. People here, they don't know, they don't understand about breeding, the breeding itself. So now I want to go, I need to buy a puppy, mm. but I don't know any. I don't know anything about the history of the dog, like the, his pedigree, what is the gene on the dog before. Like, let's say you are going to get a German Shepherd. Yes. And the German Shepherd, the family of his, let's say the mother and father, like, I mean the... The dog, uh, the history of the, his pedigree, they used to breed for canines work or for tracking work or for any hardcore work. Okay. And now you get one puppy of those. What do you expect? Yeah. The behavior, the gene itself, because it's all about genes, right? Yes. So the genes, the dog, you will see him a little bit high energy more than any other dog. He can work better than any other dogs. Okay. It, it goes the same way for if we have aggressive dogs. Okay. okay? By the way, word aggressive it shouldn't be exist because all dogs are the same it depends on how you're going to treat them how you're going to deal with them but the aggression mood in the dog it might be higher than any other dogs okay. even in the siblings like maybe you have 12 dogs in a litter yes. and you can see one of them his drive is very high and the rest are very quiet or you can see one dog is really high energy and one medium energy and one low energy yeah so when it comes to select a dog, yes, definitely you need to understand. You need to see the dogs. You need to select which one gonna suit you more. Yes. So there's a, there's some things to think about there. I think that's great advice because a lot of people just kind of scroll online. And I know there's obviously different opinions, especially in Dubai when it comes to like acquiring dogs mm -hmm. between obviously the, the big problem that there is here with breeding and it being done incorrectly and obviously the overfill of shelters, etc. So yeah. I don't want to go too much into that right now. But let's just look at, you know, most other countries where you'd have registered breeders. Exactly. Then this exactly. is why it's important to see yes. those genes. So it's really, really, very important. Right now we are working on that with Charger Kennel Club, which is a officially from FCI to register dog and to register the breeder as well. That's great. So we have literally now, um, I think next month it will be the published for the application and website okay. from them. So you can go through the breeder, you can check the dog, you can check the family history, you can check the degree of the dog. So you can select, you can pick which dog it can suit you okay. because it become like a surprise someone will get a puppy because all puppies at this age most of them are the same yeah. but once they develop like 6 months 8 months you can see a monster yes. like literally you can, you, it will become out of control yes. but it's not because of uh, anything rather than a gene and again by end of the day it will come to the training uh, point which is the dog need to be trained well a behavior and the owner need to maintain that the consistency is the secret and the key uh, factor here yes so that training side of things is essential when it comes to obviously selecting yes. a dog that makes a lot of sense so um we've we've covered obviously whether you're fit or not for dogs we've covered whether dogs are relevant to different breeds obviously more mm -hmm. suited to you i think that's a really important point um what do most people need to focus on when they bring home that puppy that first puppy because a lot of yeah. you know so many people will reach out you know 
to me. I know your inbox would be flooded with, it is flooded with messages. Um, and that's because I always tell people, talk to Sam, <laughs> like he knows, don't ask me. But people always ask other dog owners, yeah. right? They'll say, hey, well, I've got a puppy, like what do I do? What do you think is the most important, let's say three things when okay. somebody first brings home a, a puppy? Okay, I will give you three mistakes okay. dog owners are doing when Perfect. they... that's great. So first one, too much love. Like okay. too much, like unlimited, okay? Second, too much freedom. Third one, they avoid create for the dog. Okay. Okay, so let me say it in another way. So first one, now you bring your puppy in your home. Yes, of course, I love him. I can, I, I want to do everything to him. Mm. So you will see the dog owner, what they will do? They will get the puppy, they will go to the pet shop, put the puppy in the cart and they will walk and they get 20,000 items which the, the dog doesn't know what is that. Yes. And he starts to chew on the toys. But again, for him, your slipper and your shoes is a toy. Yep. So they don't understand what is that. Second, freedom. Too much freedom means I bring him to my home. I give him hold my home to run, to play, to do whatever he wants. Mm. That's totally wrong because dogs, they, by end of the day, they self and they will self-independent animal. They can just take decisions by themselves. Like, you know what? He decide this is my pee area. I'm going to pee in that area. I'm going to sleep in this area. This is my dining room. This is my living room. Yeah. He's he going to take decision. Dogs will make that choice consciously. Of course. Yeah. They will do it by themselves. So I really advise people, please limit the area for your dogs at the beginning. So now you get the dog in your home, right? This is the first day for your dog in your home. Okay. For the dog, he doesn't know anything yet. For him, he doesn't know. If you give him like a one square foot, for him, this is a palace for him. This is all my area. If you give him your whole area for him, it's the same. Yeah. So why we don't put rules from day one to the puppy or to the dog in my home? He gonna follow. If you bring dog from shelter, if you bring puppy, if you bring 10 years old dog to your home, first day, it's the same for all stage as the dogs. Please put rules for your dog. Don't torture him. Just make sure he's staying in that place. He's happy. He's enjoying his time. Yes. And starting from, let's say, third, fourth day, as long as he's behave well in that area, I'm going to expand it. I'm going to expand it. Uh, it's like he a had, reward system. Exactly. It's mm -hmm. like, exactly. So the dog, he understand that every time I will behave, they give me more rooms to move in and move. So yeah. later on, he will understand the whole house for him. It's a home. Yes. It's not only playing play area. area. Exactly. It's not a playing area. It's not a pee area. It's not a toilet. No. So he will understand the rules. He's going to follow the rules. Yeah. But give him everything from day one. That makes you spoil him. Is there a correct time to start that training process like you bring a dog home should you wait 24 hours should from day one day one yeah minute one straight yes. in yes okay both rules for your dog you need yeah. to put rules rules will discipline your dog you will have a perfect dog okay from the start yes. that's something people struggle with don't they you see this all the time like that tough love yes and unfortunately most of them they cannot follow okay like breaking heart like you know what i cannot keep him out he's crying yeah. And I'm telling them, okay, he might cry for one night or two nights, mm. but the rest of your life, you will be happy. Yes. Rather than now, you are just, you know, fix the problem with, no, it's okay. Just uh, this time is fine. Yeah. And this time will never end. See, I remember, I remember when I got Loki and we'd, we, you'd suggested crate training. It was a totally new yeah. thing for me. I hadn't done it before. Um, the results it had on him long term was amazing people would say to me, how do you, how does Loki stay at home and not chew everything? And I said, the crate training and slowly opening the house is what made such a difference mm. is he could sit with all the shoes and anything and he won't touch anything. Obviously that took time, but implementing that from day one. Yeah. And I think I remember messaging you. I was definitely annoying you too much. <laughs> I had a thousand questions for Sam all the time, but, um, and you're always very happy to reply, but the, the f one of them was Loki kept, ha he kept climbing the crate and yeah. howling and screaming and like, you know, like crying, crying, crying nonstop. And you were just like, you just need to tough it out. You need to tough it yeah, out. Yeah, right? just relax. See, I'll tell you one tip. Maybe people can yeah. learn from it about the crate training. Crate training, the dog, you put him inside. Mm. I don't want to force him to go inside the crate. I want him to walk freely inside the crate. I can keep the crate open for a day so he can go in out i give him treat inside the crate mm. let him use to go out and in by himself so it's not a punishment area for him second if he start to crying or howling inside the crate ignore him once he makes a pause maybe that pause it will be a second like he'll, mm, mm, and he will like just take a breath 
in that moment you can involve yourself with him, engage with him, speak with him, open him. So, but not while he's crying, while he's howling. Otherwise, you're gonna teach him every time you're gonna cry. I'm gonna take you out. Yeah. No, I want to teach him every time you're gonna be quiet. I can take you out. Yes, which is a hard one because even like I could relate to that with like Loki. Even today, he wanted to go to the bathroom, and so he'll like he he d- had been to the bathroom. He was just being needy. He wanted mm-hmm. attention but he wanted to go outside and go for a walk. He would bark and I still had to stop myself making the mistake of responding to his bark, Mm -hmm. right? Because then he will just keep doing that bark knowing that I'm giving some reaction. Exactly. So the the hard thing to do is just stay quiet, wait until he settles and then say, okay, let's go. Wouldn't you say? See, I will tell you about that one as well. Yeah. So it seemed exactly like jumping on you. When dog jumping on you and he told you like, just ignore him, give your back. But sometimes it become like, challenging yeah right that's right because okay you are ignoring me i'm gonna bark louder yeah okay i'm gonna do it more yeah. so it's a little bit tricky you need to know exactly how you can respond for that so it doesn't become like challenging between you and the dog like okay he i'm barking he's ignoring okay let me maybe he's, he's not hearing yes. right so i'm gonna do it louder next time uh, okay. and and it will keep on like jumping jumping some people they avoid or turn right yeah. so the dog start jumping even more higher because, okay, you cannot see me, uh, I'm here. And uh, he starts jumping more like crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little I've bit tricky. It. Yeah. It's a, to uh, find the balance. Exactly, to find the balance, yes. Okay. So like the, what's your thoughts on this? I see this a lot. Like, and I realized how different it was when we were in Wales. I was in, recently in Wales on a bit of a trip and I was going for a walk down the street and there was, honestly, everyone had a dog, mm-hmm. which I, I loved seeing because I forgot, sometimes you forget what that's like because obviously Dubai, Everyone, it's becoming more and more dog Mm -hmm. friendly, which is amazing. But what I do find that I see a lot here is like sometimes potentially like house help or different Mm -hmm. people looking after the dogs. Now, obviously it's amazing that a dog's being walked because that's important. What what would you say like, you know, is is there anything being lost when it comes to building that relationship with the dog if, if there's multiple people involved or maybe you know the house help is mm-hmm. is taking on the responsibility yeah so again this point is a little bit critical here in especially in dubai mm. most of us here are expats yeah and as you said we have uh, domestic helpers helping us at home so maybe a family of four let's say the wife husband domestic and a kid yes okay and everyone are dealing with the dog in a different way yeah so literally you are you are not doing anything Let, let's say you bring the dog to me to teach him how he gonna walk with you in a loose leash walk i teach you i teach the dog everything went well and you take your dog back home you know how to walk with your dog but unfortunately the rest of the people they don't have any clue so they start to ruin the training for the dog so here's the missing part it's, it's really missing part and especially with domestic helpers i will not say they don't care but it's not their responsibility. Yes. They don't feel like, you know, I'm doing a lot of work and now I'm taking the dog again for a walk outside. So let him do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. So here's that, it's, that's, that's what I'm telling you, it's a really critical and crucial part here when it comes to dealing with dogs in Dubai. It's a big responsibility. Everyone dealing with a dog need to take that responsibility by all meaning. Okay. So they need to be involved in that training. Yeah, 100%. That's why I always request, please, whoever, even if you have a family, 10 members, please bring them. We will train all of them. Mm. So at least you are not wasting your time. You are not wasting your money. You are not wasting the training you are giving to your dog. Yeah, one of the big beliefs that you have that that you told me is obviously when you train the dogs, it's the owners that almost need more training, right? I will tell you something. Forget about qualified trainer, experienced trainer, whatever trainer. The best trainer for the dog is the owner himself. Yeah. or itself like this is the, that's the best no one can compensate that with the dog yeah. whatever that maybe the dog trainer he put the basics the trainer he gonna put the basic he gonna put the fundamental he gonna build it for the dog but who gonna maintain that the dog he might stay with me for one month two months he's 15 he gonna live 15 years right mm-hmm. he gonna stay with the owner more so the owner need to take the responsibility yeah it's, there is no magic wound like i'm gonna do it the dog will never forget no, by the way, the dog gonna challenge the owner as well. Like sometimes dogs, they ask him like, for me, Cooper, 
He know how to do everything, right? So I ask him, Cooper set, and he look at me like, hmm, I'm not gonna set like you. You set yourself like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he try to challenge you, but when you correct him, that's totally fine. But imagine if uh, another one or the domestic helper she ask him to set, and he like, no, I'm gonna walk there. I'm gonna do that, and okay, you know what? Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. He will never learn. So it's undoing those behaviors. <laughs> yes. Okay. He will never learn. Yeah, I mean that's definitely a good point because I think that's a lot of thing. A lot of the problem that happens with people in Dubai, right? When it comes to like, yes, obviously big families, different people taking the responsibility and yeah. mixed messages. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like foster homes, like obviously the correct avenues to kind of find dogs and whatnot. Um, what would you say is, let's say for people adopting, because mm-hmm. I know I know there's a lot of people that um, obviously are doing their part to try and help with the adoption. What did do people adopting a dog have to keep in mind when bringing home a, a dog from an adopted shelter rather than a puppy? Because I'm sure there's a bit of yeah. a difference. So first of all, you need to understand that's not your dog. Okay. What I mean that's not your dog, that, that dog you just get him right now. The dog, he doesn't know anything about your home. He doesn't know anything about uh, about your family. He doesn't know anything. And the dog you just got him from a shelter where the dogs are barking a lot. And the dog, he might be traumatized by anything. So when we work with shelter dogs, especially for behavior thing, we keep predict what might happen and how we can fix it and change. So you as a a person who taking responsibility to foster the dog at your home, Mm. please be gentle with him, put rules. So what time you gonna feed him in the morning? Where he gonna stay? Where he where are you gonna keep him? Don't give him your home again. Just in a specific area. Make sure that dog and you need to understand he's shy. Hmm. So even if you have a dog and you are really a good dog lover, okay, don't think that shelter dogs will be the same. Some of them may be okay, but I'm talking about the general. The dogs are scary, scared. So they have that fear inside them. They don't feel secure. The insecurity is always in them. So you just need to be very careful. Try to give them love, give them space till they will settle themselves with you. And that process, it take months. Okay. Like maybe three to six months till the shelter dogs will settle himself even after adopted or during the fostering time. Okay. So the people, so being patient is something that's quite important Uh, because people are, sadly, I think you see a lot of the time people you know, you'd hear it about it a lot. They'll bring home a dog and then mm-hmm. they're already second guessing their decision after maybe a few, like a few days or weeks. Yeah, to return it back. That's right. It takes, yeah. But it takes yeah. time. Of course, it takes time. Mm. How many stories we hear about dogs and they are beautiful dogs. Like literally we, like, we have one dog, uh, he makes his pets. Okay. And he's beautiful. Like the dog is fluffy, very beautiful dogs. And he get abandoned from maybe three houses mm. before. Because the dog, he's barking a lot. The dog, he tried to snap on kids. Through the dog, he, he's not socialized. And every family, they don't want to wait. They don't have that patience, as you said. Yeah. And now uh, he got a very beautiful house. The dog will train. He's going out and he get his best life. But it takes time. It takes around three months. I'm telling you. Any shelter dogs, he need from three to six months mm. to settle himself, to understand he will not get abandoned again. Like imagine you are living in a very nice house and tomorrow you went to a place where people are fighting for food. They are shouting, screaming, crazy thing happening. You, yes. So it's the same for dogs. Of course, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah it's being patient and playing that long game. The, you know, the thing I wanted to speak about too is obviously Dubai, becoming you've been here quite a long time Mm -hmm. Dubai how has it changed in the last you know even since I've been here six years or so how has it changed as far as accepting pets but particularly dogs Um, Mm -hmm. and you know I know yeah what's your thoughts on how how things have changed here in Dubai it's a huge difference between we are talking even I've been here since 2007 Mm -hmm. and I've been involved with dog community 2008 because I used to do event for them and I used to be a judge for them and agility competitions. So it's it's like before we have maybe like four or five uh, uh, people who are attending our competition, but right now maybe thousands. Wow. Yeah. And especially after COVID time, after COVID time, the pet industry or the pet market increased by 400%. Wow. So there is a huge number of pets, huge number of pet owner. 
uh, as again as I told you most of us are expats yes. and people sometimes now people are not sometimes most of people who are traveling and coming to here in Dubai they bringing their pets with them so the market are expanding the market and here in Dubai you know the government of Dubai they always cope with every change happening yes so they cope with that as well before you cannot find you cannot find easily any restaurant any bit friendly restaurants any hotel any you cannot find that right now you how many bit restaurant you have all the palm area now the point it's a bit friendly restaurant west beach point right that's right it's the point area it's incredible and I, i will tell you something i it will be announced very soon like uh, but let me say it uh, exclusive in oh, your wow. show right now <laughs> so uh, before we don't have any beach in dubai for pets yes. or dogs right yeah. so officially it will be open 29 of april uh, a very beautiful beach for pets it's a pet friendly beach you can go with your dogs you can swim instead of driving all the way to another emirates yes now if uh, they're gonna launch it on 29 of april here Amazing. in dubai yeah it, it's a huge it's a huge beach is a very very beautiful very cool guys so we'll definitely make sure you stay tuned for the announcement yeah. of where that location is going to be but yeah. that's pretty big because I, I actually been driving to um el Quain yeah to try to get the dogs and I'm even then like it's not uh, it's not necessarily you know if you get people on the beach who aren't dog really friendly then yeah. you kind of sometimes have to leash them up and so wow that's a really big yeah. deal but that just does go to show guys how how open uh, dubai has come with exactly with dogs i think it was hard when I'd first got here, because in lots of the, we- the rest of the world, dogs are, are, are kind of more privileged to be almost everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. So yeah. it's good to see that Dubai yeah. is finally catching up. To I'm sure soon you're going to see bits in the metro, malls. So you reckon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's good news for Loki because yeah. he doesn't like leaving my side. <laughs> Actually, the only side that Loki like doesn't mind leaving me for is for Sam. Yeah. How yeah. many dogs? I remember. I'll never forget this. Obviously, we've been on hikes together and. All the dogs yeah. that Sam's actually <laughs> trained, in particular Loki, they would just follow you. It ended up sometimes being people walking and then you at the front with all the dogs all the just dogs, with yeah. you because they all had been trained by you. So they just get so excited. So you how, how many, you've trained a few celebrity dogs here, haven't you? We'll yeah. give Duke a shout out. Obviously, Pretty's yeah. dog, Duke. <laughs> exactly. He loves you. Yeah, Duke. And like every single time, Pretty coming to pick Duke from the facility. Yeah. So... We stand together, me and Pretty, and she asked him, okay, you're going to go to Sam or you're going to come to me? And he, he will, chooses you. Yeah, he will come <laughs> around to me. Yeah, Sam's my only real competition. <laughs> Vic will argue that she's also Loki's favorite, but I don't. when it comes to Sam, I don't think she comes close, unfortunately. You are his favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, very cool. So I wanted to ask you a few questions when it comes to... Um, Let me just see where it is because I honestly, I tried not to let today become a Q&A for you, just no, questions. But no. honestly, so many people had so many questions that they wanted to know. Um, and I have so many, I could talk to Sam for hours about all of this stuff. And I think it's so important to be, when you are, when you do become a dog owner, to take the time to upskill yourself yep. in learning almost as much as you can. Do you, how many conversations do you have with people where they're not really prepared to take the right measures to upskill themselves every day yeah like seriously every day i have so many people they you try to advise them you try to speak with them like guys you need to do like one two three just follow that just yeah. follow whatever we are telling you and maybe because they are busy and also here in dubai it's very the, the day itself is running very like you know it's it flies yeah. yeah it's a very like hustle bustle city it's go go so go I, maybe because of that but if you have that kind of I, i'm telling them just 30 minutes a day hmm. if you don't have time just 30 minutes a day please do that with your dogs because there is also misunderstanding happening when it comes to dog training like you can see dogs like a dog show who's walking and like you know obedience 100 percent, and they thought my dog will reach that level hmm. okay if you want your dog to reach that level you need to understand what that dog is doing on daily basis you know the dog to reach that level he needs three years of training on daily basis like like it's seriously it's like a summer camp like a boot yeah. camp for dogs every single day just to reach that level to compete in that position yes okay are you ready to do that with your dog yeah. no i cannot okay so when i'm speaking about the, with, with those people okay we need to understand there's so many different and kind of training okay which one you want? You need your dog to be a domestic pet, which is, I call him, he's come to me. He's listened to me. He's walk with me in a loose leash. If I let the leash off, he will run, he will play, he will enjoy. 
okay that's easy no problem we can do that but don't expect anything more than that yeah. like you finish just only a basic obedience okay i put my dog off leash he ran away he's not coming back to me okay your dog doesn't know how to walk with you on leash yeah and you want your dog to be off leash it doesn't work like that yeah yeah very true and yeah that makes a lot of sense so th- for those people then or for anybody listening what would you say is like the number one like i'm i know there's probably a few mm-hmm. but what would you say is the number one most game changing bit of advice that you can give for someone when it comes to dog training engagement okay okay you just told me right now why dogs are following me because i build that engagement with the dogs any dogs coming for training i spend at least three to five days just only engagement i need to build a bond between me and the dog i need the dog to trust me Mm. if i call him he's coming to me he knows something good coming to him so that engagement and the trust to be built between the trainer or the owner and the dog this is a success factor for any kind of training. The dog, he gonna trust you. If he gonna walk with you and he feel insecure and he has that fear, like, you know, something gonna be happening. But because I'm walking with him, he gonna walk and he will have that self-confident because he know that I'm taking the right decision. I will not make anything harm him because I'm not harming him. I'm not using any kind of negative or positive punishment for the dog. I need my dog to have a very good experience during the training time. So that's the engagement. If you are telling me one thing, I will keep repeating it over and over. Please keep engaged with your dog in every aspect, every time. Build a trust, build a bond with your dog. Wow, that, that is an amazing bit of advice. And I think it's something that would help a lot of people. And, and that, that's why I think finding the time to make sure from the start that you ask yourself all of those questions that you mentioned. Yeah. Do you have the lifestyle that can suit the dog? Exactly. And if it is, then you can offer the right engagement and and then you can have a really like, I guess, you know, compatible family yeah. member, right? Of course. It's, it's a family member. It's 15 years responsibility at least. Yeah, this is another thing people don't realize yeah. is they, they don't realize how much of a long-term commitment it is. And I think, you know, a lot of people sometimes can see pets as just like an accessory, which mm. they're definitely obviously nothing, nothing even close to that. They're literally like a family member. Um, and you know, if you've not felt that yet, hopefully, you know, you start to build that bond and, and realize how amazing that is, that feeling. What are things to look for for people when they're, they're finding the right facility and location for dog related care? I, I know obviously, you know, you're this year at Dog Venture, but I, I wanted to kind of just keep it general and say, what do you think things that people need to look for when it comes to finding the right space? For me, it's all about safety. It doesn't matter the space of the facility, mm. it's always about safety because for me as a dog owner, all what I'm looking for is peace of my mind. I need to make sure my dog in that area he's enjoying and he's safe. Okay. Because rather than that, it will be useless, right? Correct, no, I agree. Like, I think just the amount of times that I've had to have Loki and Luna, you know, in, in care, the thought of just knowing that they're in safe hands, I'm being updated, Yes. I can relax. I know that there, there's passion to, to, to from the people looking after them it literally makes the world of difference exactly peace of mind i'm telling you for the adult owner it's a peace of mind mm. that's our slogan let's say yeah. okay peace of mind of the dog owner and for the pet themselves superior service for them we need them to enjoy every single minute they are staying in the place yeah i know mine definitely enjoy every second <laughs> they almost love it there more than <laughs> home some days but it is such a special thing and something that i think you people out there if you it, you need to just take the time to research, find the right space yeah. um, and, you know, make sure you feel comfortable leaving your, your obviously you're very like your family member there with you. Um, so we had a few questions from social media sure. that I wanted to kind of just quickly touch on before we move into like the health and wellness side yeah. of the topic. But we had one question from somebody, from somebody asking how to train a puppy to pee outside and stop using their pad. Okay. So most people, I think they put the pads on the floor, right? Yeah. When they get a puppy. Pee the, pad inside what, the house. Yeah. So for me, the pee pad inside the house, one of the most bad idea for the dog owner to train the dog because unless you don't have time. So for me, usually I said, okay, now I'm getting a puppy. Please take at least three day off. If you cannot take one week off, stay with your dog for at least minimum three days in a row mm. with your dog. And now I need to train my dog the pee area it will be out of the house so i need to take him if he's a puppy i need to take him at least every hour or hour and a half or two hours depend on his age okay because the pee training and poo training is not 
physically. I, we are, I'm not training my dog. I need to walk you out to be in that area. Actually, we are training his gallbladder to hold the pee for a long time. Okay. Okay. So I need him to understand that I need the dog as a puppy. He cannot hold it. He cannot hold himself. That's why they can be at any time. So I need that gallbladder to be empty. Right. Yes. So I need to take the dog out every one hour or two hours at the beginning. When he, while he's sleeping, he can hold it maybe up to four, six hours, which is totally fine. Okay. Once he's going to wake up, he needs to go out to pee. If he start uh, playing and uh, finish the play, he, he needs to go to pee. If he wake up from the nap time, he needs to go out to pee. If he, if he get excited, like super excited about something, he wants to go out to pee. So... You, you, now you can imagine, as I told you, puppy is a huge responsibility. It's just not like, you know, I get a puppy, it can be easy. No, we need a responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. If you bring your dog your dog to me to train him for pee and poo, I'm going to do the same routine for him. Now I'm going to hand it over to you. If you're not going to follow the same routine, it's useless. And about the pee pad, now I'm teaching my dog. He can pee in my house. And the pee pad, the texture of the pee pad itself it's exactly the same if he jump on your bed it's the same all right yeah. so he might pee on your bed he might pee on your sofa so the best thing to do is please train your dog to pee out of your house so okay? that could be like a balcony if someone's on yeah if you have a grass uh, it's, or a it's, grass area yes exactly that's, okay. the, that's the best and thing. when people get those like square grass yeah that works that's a more encouraging yeah because it again the dogs they need different area to pee on it and and when it comes to poo, uh, and we need to clean it right away. Yeah. Because dogs not like cats, they're not going to poo in the same place if it's not clean. It okay. should be always clean. Otherwise, okay. he's going to change the area. The location. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's definitely a valuable piece of information. And we've had another question, which was the secret to crate training. Mm -hmm. um, I think we covered crate training yeah. a little bit earlier. But, you know, just quickly, what would you say is the main point or the purpose of crate training? So the main point or the main purpose, why we do crate training. Crate training for us as a human, it's exactly like my home, okay? I'm in the street, I'm at work, and when I go back my home, I feel com very comfortable. I feel like I'm safe. Mm -hmm. I feel it's like my confined area, right? So I need to build that same feeling to my dog. So I'm going to use the crate for him. It's exactly the same. And the best way, and let's say it's just a trick for the dogs, please, do mental stimulation inside the crate. You can use the cone cone. You can use licking mat inside the crate. So the dog, he doing something, something he really like it. He mm -hmm. chew on something. It takes time. It make him tired and he will fall asleep inside the crate. So you build that, you know, that happy moment for him inside the crate. If he took the, uh, the treat and he walk out of the crate, please take the treat from him and it's not allowed until he be sitting inside the crate. Okay. And a lot of the time people will make the step too of leaving the dog too long in the crate, mm -hmm. which can would generally mm -hmm. cause more of a negative atmosphere, right? So um, long hours, what if you can define like six, eight hours, it's, it's not fair. Even if you yeah. can leave him six, eight hours in the house, it's not fair for them. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the question also kind of said that they'd left their, their dog for four hours in the crate and they were whining. So I think sometimes it's also like, Sometimes that duration. Yeah, duration. You need to build up the duration as well. Even at your home, you need to build up the duration. If you get a puppy today and you leave the home next day for your work, and you're going to leave him for four hours, he's going to whine, he's going to cry, he's going to be crazy. Mm. So that's why I'm telling you, you need at least three to five days when you get a new puppy to your home. You don't have any responsibility rather than that puppy yeah. for three, four days. You're going to build the duration, even you're going to go out for five minutes, come back, 10 minutes, come back, one hour, come back. Yeah. So you need to build it so the dog, he can feel, okay, you are leaving and you are coming back. Yeah. But imagine you first day, you left and four hours, six hours, the dog, he doesn't know. That's why right. I'm telling you, there is expectation always from the dogs. Yes. Yeah, that's right. It's not fair, is it? Like I got lucky both times. I think with Loki, it was COVID. Yeah. So I had almost what, <laughs> like six, six months of me being in the house, which was amazing. And it helped his training so much. Yeah. Um, and then with Luna, I actually, I, I, I took, I think it was nearly 10 days off work. Yeah. I actually had one of my clients, she was so, Vic, she was an amazing client of mine, but she actually would come round and while I was at work, she would actually stay with Luna yeah. or like just keep a bit of company. But I'll tell you something, for the second dog, it's always easy. Easier. Yeah, it's always easier for the second dog, especially if there is another dog. Yeah. It, it, was, it was really easy. This is a question from me for you mm -hmm. because 
I think getting a second dog was the best choice I'd made. True. What's your thoughts on people always ask, oh, it's harder with two dogs or it's easier with two dogs. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts is the same. Okay. It's 100% is the same. The only thing different is the amount of food you are feeding them. Mm. That's it. So instead of you are feeding one dog, you're going to feed two dogs. But the exercise is the same. You are going for a walk, you are going walking with one dog, you can go walk with two dogs as long as you are behaving well. Mm. Okay. For me also, if I'm keeping my dog at home for two hours or three hours alone, it's better for me to keep him with another dog. So at least they are enjoying their time, they're playing, they're doing whatever they are doing together. So they yeah. are exercising themselves as well. So two dogs, for me, it's the best solution for people who are leaving the dogs alone at home maybe more than three, four hours. Yeah, that's good bit of advice. It's literally been a game changer for me. And Loki just loves Luna. Like even when they're at daycare, they'll see each other because they're usually yeah. separate because Loki's in the bigger dogs, Luna's in the medium size. And they'll literally just hug each other. Exactly. <laughs> the, the bond that they have is so special. So I think definitely, I think it's been an amazing choice having two. The last question I wanted to ask before we get onto some like fitness related um, conversations just quickly is we had a question about somebody moving from the UK mm -hmm. um, to Dubai and they're worried about their, their Labrador in the heat. Oh. Elaborate on like bringing a dog from another country to this climate and then obviously Dubai as a climate to own okay. dogs. What's that like? I think I know the... Yes, he's, he's a mutual contact from yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Alex, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to contact him. We have a Zoom meeting to discuss about it Amazing. later. Amazing, yeah. yeah. But uh, for him, yes, to, to move from cold country to weather like here in Dubai, yeah. at the beginning it will be uh, quite different, quite challenging for them especially for the dogs, but with time, the dog, they adapt themselves exactly like humans. Okay, if you are moving to UK and you've been here for how many years, mm. but after maybe after months, after one year, you will adapt yourself for the, to the weather there. So for them, I really advise them, uh, first of all, don't use any kind of puts in your dogs. So don't take that advice, don't apply it here in Dubai, please. Just avoid the uh, hot time or the heat time in the morning, Please go early morning for a walk or go late night for a walk. Avoid afternoon time walk by all meaning. Because okay. I'm talking about that specific case. Yes. You know, my dogs, they love to be in the sun. Like yes. they run the sun, they born here, they adult themselves already. For them, that's totally fine. Even we are going hike during summer, it's, it's fine for them. But the dog who just recently moved or gonna move here in Dubai, Avoid sun for your dog because he will be really easy for him to get any kind of uh, heat stroke or anything. Okay. So avoid all of that. Just go for early morning walk, late night walk. Maybe if you want to do some exercise, you can send him for a daycare where it's indoor, easy, yeah. use a pool. But please avoid any kind of sun right now till the winter time is come. He can be exposed to the sun because that time the weather is fine and the dog start to adapt himself makes sense and i think like the general rule and because people always ask me obviously with the huskies and i'm like i think the biggest thing mm. i just like keep in mind is if i wasn't going to be in that if i didn't want to be in that situation then my dog wouldn't either so when it gets to 40 degrees you're yes. like how does your dog handle the heat i'm like well they're not outside they're inside the ac on with me because yeah. why i wouldn't be outside so but, why but would also dog? for the huskies here in in dubai especially those huskies who were born and raised here in dubai yeah. double coat it helped them a lot to protect themselves from the sun. Yeah. So people, they have that misunderstanding about, you know, during summertime, I'm gonna shave my dog just to make sure he will get the air circulation and all that uh, thing, but that's totally wrong. Dogs, they don't have sweet glands on their body like us. We have sweet glands, so we regulate our body temperature by sweating, okay? Dogs have the same concept, but they regulate by panting. They pant. That's uh -huh. why you can see dogs panting a lot because he need to regulate his body yes. and the sweet glands in his paws. So we said, okay, you can put water in the dog paws. That's totally fine. But the rest of his body, nothing. Uh -huh. So literally the double coat, the fur in the dogs, it protects them from the sun. Okay. So definitely guys, do not shave the yeah, coat, please. especially of breeds like Huskies. Huskies, German Shepherds, all these dogs, please. Okay. Um, Sam, as we start to come towards the end of the of the episode today, which has been extremely informative, I wanted to just touch on like what does what role does health and wellness play in your lifestyle? Um, obviously, you're very active. The dogs are very active. How does it like you know? How do those two things go together? Owning a dog and and health and wellness. Uh, 
so for daily routine let's yeah. say so yeah. daily routine it's, it's normal you need to wake up early you need to take dogs for a walk uh, feed them get ready for work go to work come back and i'm lucky because in the, in my in dog venture hq we i take my dogs with me so during the day they are playing there yeah. and but usually because of cooper he's really hyper dog his cooper is 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 really hyper so he need to exercise even more so if i go for uh, cycling at night i take him with me maybe for 40 minutes he's just pulling me yeah. non-stop so we have that tracker to count how many steps and maybe on a daily basis he more than 20 kilometer wow yeah which yeah. is an important it's important so, to obviously consider your health and well-being exactly. but also the health and well-being of the dog from of a fitness dog. perspective of, of course of course bike so, Biking's not easy with a husky on there, on the, right? It's beautiful. If you train them, it's really amazing because you literally do nothing. Yeah. You're just sitting, they pulling you like, you know, it's that's in their jeans, right? They slide the sliders. Yeah. So once you put the harness on them, with the leash, halas, like they know what they're going to do. <laughs> they just run. Yeah, that's right. I've, I've had Loki and Luna on the bike and it's one of the best ways to yeah. like exercise with them because they can run how many, the crazy number of kilometers per Yeah, day. they can run. I'm telling you, Cooper, he 45 minutes sprinting. Like I recorded on my camera, sprinting. The guy, he's just only run. Let me run. Yeah, wow. Yeah. In, 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 uh, incredible. Um, do you think owning a pet encourages the owner to be more active? 100%. Yeah. I'll tell you something and it's, it's really nice. We have some people or families, I would say families, and couples, they come and they say, thank you so much. You change our lifestyle because we used to be clapping, going every night outside. We don't have anything. When we encourage them to adopt a dog, they adopt first pet and they don't know what are they going to do with that? Yeah. And we start to give them classes and training for the owner themselves. Yes. And they start to feel like, okay, we have a responsibility. And and those people, they are very sweet because they feel the responsibility. They start to take it and they happy to do that. And they, like, they quit everything. Mm -hmm. They become like, they are going to the gym. Yeah. And, they, and now during the weekend, they need to wake up early because we are going for a hike or doing some activity or doing something. So, okay, we're going to sleep early. We're going to wake up early. We are committed to that. So really it changed people's life. Yeah. And definitely if you are if you are not taking care about your health and wellness as well, let's say, how are you going to take care of dogs? Because right. you really need, and to be honest with you, dogs make you more active. Yeah. Because it's, it's again, it's a responsibility. I need to take my dog for a walk. That's At right. least 30 minutes. Any that's the minimum, right? Yeah. People sometimes you go for a walk for one hour and running. Yeah. If you are going, if you are thinking to go for camping, just imagine that you are taking Loki and Luna. Yeah, for, it's it's a beautiful moment, right? That's right. It is, so yeah. it makes people really more active. Yes. Yeah, I I love that quality that a pet has, or in particular a dog, because I think it definitely like I'm an outdoor person, so I love it. But I know some of my clients, and they obviously they come they they go to to dog venture, but it encourages them to be more active. And for yeah. me as a coach, I'm like, I'm super happy because like oh, we're walking our dog twice a day. We got up early. We, you know, we're making better food choices because, you know, we're feeling better about ourselves. We've lost weight, mm. but all of that can in involve, involve your pet. See, when we start at the beginning, we just only try to merge or try to combine all kinds of sports with pets. Yeah. So we start doing jogging with your dogs, right? Yes. Running, Dubai run now, we are doing Dubai run in uh, Jumeirah. Uh, cycling with your dog even snorkeling with your dog. Yes. You can do most of sports, whatever you like, whatever it's your hobby, you can do it with your pets. And it will encourage you to do it even in, I will not say in a fun way, but in a way you will enjoy it more. That's right. So definitely if you have a pet or a dog, it will improve your uh, quality of your life. Yeah, it's an amazing bit of advice, guys. And definitely like there's plenty of activities that you can stay up to date with in particular from Dog Venture that will keep you active with your pets. So stay tuned for more information on that. I wanted to ask you, Sam, as we come towards the end of today's episode, where do you see yourself in the next five years from now? Because you're very ambitious. If, if you remember the introduction, guys, <laughs> Like Sam had obviously come a long way to move towards what he was very passionate about. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'd love to know, like, where do you see yourself in five years from now? So five years from now, I know I, not most of people knows about it, but there is a sport in dogs community. It's called IGP. Okay. IGP, that's for tracking, for obedience, um, uh, guarding or biting. We call it IGP. IGP is need fully dedicated time from the owner with his dogs 
to attend any kind of competition like that. Okay. The dog need at least three to five years to be ready, fully ready to attend the world champion competition, let's say. Okay, so it's like a special forces type uh, dog? No. No, 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 no. It's, it's, just it's just a competition. Okay. And the dog literally, he, he, he like become like, not report, but it's high, high end kind of training for dogs to attend a, any such competition like that in wow. the world. So far, there is no, unfortunately, Egyptian uh, team or anything attending that. So that's my plan. I really need to involve uh, myself in that sports. So... Uh, hopefully, I'm working on it right now. I'm Amazing. working with some people here already in UE, and we are introducing. We very soon we're gonna open IGB school in in UE as well. Yes. So uh, I hope that my future plan, the five years plan for from now on. Amazing, inshallah. That sounds like such a great plan. It's definitely something that suits you quite well. That's I can't imagine that's an easy road it's to get a dog to that kind of level, right? It's a commitment. No, it's it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. It needs a lot of work, and it needs a lot of. And not not work only from the trainer from from the trainer from the vet from from the handler from the decoy it's like a full team it's not only one person work it's, it's you need a full team to be supporting you to get them into that position yes. well that leads me to our final question for today which is the lifestyle hub golden question what do you think the key is to living a happy and fulfilling lifestyle uh you need to look after your health that's the first thing at all you need to plan your life mm. don't just wake up in the morning and do things randomly you really need to have a plan for every step you are doing in your life uh you need to eat well like you need to eat healthy food like uh, for me when i uh, told you about it i will ask you tell me about your lifestyle tell me what do you eat as well yes so it define oh, what oh, who are you yes. like it define who are you uh be happy be positive uh, spread energy around you like positive energy around you um, smile yes I think it's the one simple of, the yeah. simple smile simple smile it will be Goes very a long way. yeah I think I definitely love those because I think do you think do you think having a pet can give you all of those oh my goodness it will give you that's I think if we gather all that point and put it in a pot it will come out uh, as a pet or yeah a I, exactly <laughs> like if you were to stir that those yeah. recipe up and it would make something I, I'm sure it would be a dog yes because as you were saying that I was literally thinking I know lo- like just being with Loki gives me all of those encourages all of those yeah. behaviors and I think if you haven't experienced like that connection with a dog yet I would definitely say you take the right steps to to look into it um it, you, it will help you it will mm. teach you as well because also if you need to eat healthy you need to feed your dog healthy food that's right. it's not about anything i'm going to feed my dog you need to search you need to look what's going to fit my dog as a health for a sport or kind of activity you need to do it right for yourself you that's need right. to engage your pet your dog as well with you be happy smile tell me when you see a dog complain yeah never that's right, right. Uh, the dog will never complain about anything he always happy he always running even if he did a mistake if he did like you know a horrible thing in his life he doesn't care the yeah. dogs they don't have that guilty feeling like i did something wrong he just live his present he want to be happy he won't make you happy he will come if you start shout at your dog he will be scared he will take a corner mm-hmm. one minute you'll see he's coming running at you like let's play let's go do stuff That's right. and sometimes dog really change your mood yes like you come very whatever you have whatever you have at your work you came back to your home just sitting in the sofa, you see he's bringing maybe his toys, his favorite toys, give it to you. Like, yeah. let's play, let's do something. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, best will change your, your life. As you said, it improve your life, or your quality. It does. Of life. It, it's amazing. And uh, honestly, every little bit of advice we've had from t- today from Sam has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much. Where can everybody find more, a little bit about you if they want to reach out? Where can they find you? So, I have my Instagram. Uh, I reply for every single message on my Instagram page. Cool. We have also in Dog Ventures, they can come, they can visit us there, uh, provide them with free consultation, especially for shelters, dogs. We give them free training as well. So we just need to make sure the person who's gonna adopt the dog, he gonna stay with him. Okay. So feel free to visit us, drop us a message and come to see us there. Definitely guys, check out Dog Venture. One of the most amazing facilities in the UAE to date and definitely with the most passionate team there so it's the place and the home for loki and luna and now (laughs) fast a lot of other dogs across the uh, across dubai and the uae too um so sam thank you so much for coming on thank you so much
Guys, what you can expect from next episode, stay tuned. We're going to kind of cover a few different topics. Um, thank you so much for listening today. It was a very informative episode. I hope you took away a few tips. I'm sure you took some some very great advice to take home um, to, to implement in your household if you're dog now, with your dog now or if you've been considering getting a pet. Definitely some amazing uh, little points there from Sam. So please be sure to follow up and get in touch if you have any questions uh, for Sam at all. And lastly, I do have a quick favor before we go. If you're enjoying the podcast, please let me know if you have a minute to spare. Um, let me know. I'd love to read reviews in particular on this episode. Um, this lets me know what listeners like or disliked about the show so I can make sure to give you content you all love to hear. Please subscribe in the app you're listening to um, and put on the notifications to be able to be alerted when the new episodes are released. Um, before we go, one last shout out to our sponsors at Ghana Fitness Supplies, the leading home and gym specialist in the Middle East. Be sure to check them out at www.ghana.ae for all your fitness needs. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me, Jason Grimmer, on the Lifestyle Hub podcast. I'll catch you later.